I have a friend who is proficient in three languages, English, sarcasm, and profanity. Before I begin, I'd like to ask all of you a question. Why do you use profanity? I don't think a lot of people have given this much thought. People have told me that using profanity makes them feel powerful, that profanity makes them feel good, that profanity is just a way for them to release the bottled up frustration. Well, newsflash, profanity doesn't express anything. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sabrina, and today I'd like to offer some insight as to why we should pay more attention to the power of our words. I still remember my five-year-old self, vowing to never succumb to peer pressure, guarding myself against the profane world. I stood by that principle pretty well. And then high school came. And then one day, amidst the frenzy of a social event, I said the word poop. Except I didn't say the word poop. I was so freaked, I freaked out so bad. Did anybody hear me? Oh my gosh, everyone's judging me so badly right now. Did I actually say that? I looked around me, but nobody was reacting. I felt a little bit more relieved. But then, my stomach cringed a little bit. Why did I actually say that? What is it about profanity that makes them have such an appeal? The way I look at it is that profanity, profanity has the forbidden fruit effect. The more that you're told that certain words are bad, and the more that you're told that you're not allowed to use these words, the more that you have a compulsion to do so. You feel like a rebel, and so you feel powerful. But then again, Maybe profanity isn't as ego-boosting as we thought it to be. Maybe it can be used for humor. When teenagers banter each other, they use profanity all the time. And that isn't bad, right? Is there a problem with the generation nowadays turning to profanity as a form of humor? Well, a conventional view of profanity is that it's less precise and less descriptive than a non-profane wording. And so, by using profanity, you're less accurately conveying your thoughts or your ideas to the people around you. George Orwell, an English novelist, once said that if thought can corrupt our language, our language can also corrupt our thought. Wow. Our language can corrupt our thought. I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about Orwell's chosen word here, corrupt. It feels heavy, even as you say it, corrupt. Not only does language have the potential to taint or mar our thoughts, language has the potential to corrupt, to destroy the integrity of our thoughts. And if the language we are using are these coarse, unspecific profanities, what does that say about the thoughts that go on in our head? The way I see it is like, profanity is like a slap word. It's like when parents scold their children. They reserve the slaps for the most severe cases. And this exclusive use of the slaps give them a, so, a sort of power because the slaps emphasize and highlights the severity of the child's mistake. It's the same with profanity. I do believe that in some cases, Using profanity can actually create an emphasis on a particular emotion. Like for example, you know you really crossed the line when that sweet, dainty teacher raises up her voice on you and tells you to shut the bleep up. That's big, right? But what's happening now is that people are using profanity carelessly and so prevalently that it dilutes its meaning and it diminishes its impact. You see, I love words. As a writer and as, as a reader and aspiring writer, I love how words can quite literally build a whole new world, how words can change mindsets, and how words can contain a deep essence of culture and history. But above all, I love the power they hold. The way I see words is that 
they have an energy to them. And this energy can be positive or negative ones. Now, before I talk more about that, I'd like to share with you a new concept that I've learned recently. It's called code switching. What code switching is, is basically refers to how people can turn on and off certain actions or behaviors when they're in different conditions. In fact, we code switch every day without realizing it. For example, it's almost impossible to walk down the school hallways without getting bombarded from all sides, conversations littered with profanity. But the minute that everybody reaches the classroom and takes their seat, then boom, everybody becomes an angel. <laughs> Another example of code switching is, remember the time when you, go, you went to the cinema with your friends and you're watching the latest Hollywood blockbuster movie? And then the action scene comes up and all the actors are machine gunning 10 profane words in a single second. But you glaze over that detail. It doesn't actually register in your head. But then now I'm telling you that you need to take that same movie, bring it home, and now you're watching it with your grandma. And then suddenly, all these profane words are just jumping out at you and you're like, whoa! I didn't even realize that these were in here. I need to turn it off. Grandma cannot be watching this. You see, this just shows how unconscious we are of the use of profanity around us. And this unconsciousness is a result of what Daniel Kahneman coins as System 1 in his book, Thinking Fast and Slow. Dan, um, Kahneman believes that the brain runs on two parallel processors, and System 1 is the more fast, instinctive, emotional one between the two. What this means in terms of our profanity culture is that the profane words are stored in our system one box. It gets stored in our unconscious region. And this is what makes us unaware of the use of profanity around us. It removes the filter in our mind when we're processing or when we're speaking these words. So now, what's the big takeaway? I guess what I want all of you to realize is that you need to be more aware. Be aware of the situation that you're at, and be aware of the, time, of the people you're with. Because by being aware of the situation and the people you're with, you will be able to be more aware of your word choice. Because words have power, we need to use them discreetly. Now, the power of the word comes from your intention of using the word. If you mean well, then you're giving the word a positive energy. But if you mean ill, you're giving them a negative energy. But sometimes your intentions alone aren't enough. The power of a word can also be affected by how your receiver interprets your words. A joke to you may be taken as an offense to me. But at the same time, you could mean to hurt me, but I could just take it lightly. And so, what I want all of you to remember is that your words have power. And you have the power to change your words. Because you see, there are three things that are truly inherently ours. And those are our thoughts, our words, and how we choose to use them. Because we have power over our words, because we have authority over them, we also have an accountability to it. We have to be responsible for the consequences of our words on other people. Our words should strive to comfort, to heal, and to empower other people. And I don't think that profanity does a very good job of doing that. Our words are being used as weapons to scar, rather than instruments to heal nowadays. And I think that it's something that we should pay more attention to. So in closing, be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of your thoughts. And by doing that, be aware of the power of your words. Thank you.